getting started? Oh. They're rolling now. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't so, know that was going on. Chick fil A. Chick fil A. I have to breathe for a second. Why are you so nervous? I don't remember, like, see, why are you so nervous? I don't. Let's talk about that real quick. Yeah, let's make this about that. Like, seriously. Explain Wait, to us. Hold up. Like, right. sync the sound, like, when you're doing the video, you see, like, a sound wave and you yeah. just. Okay. Got it. Because uh, that's probably going to be my primary sound, but the iPhone will have sound too, but when I. So your partner in sound? The sync sound, yeah. Well, first of all, apparently we started, so uh, we haven't named this yet. No, we haven't. We'll come up. We'll with come something. up. With, yeah, we'll come up with some. The show with no name. The show with no show name. With no name. <laughs> and I like yourselves, it. please. Blick Blick. Blick Blick. Blick Blick. I'm Jack Blick. I'm Jack. I'm Jack. <laughs> <Blick. laughs> I'm Jack. <laughs> first and last. I'm Eric. Eric. I'm I'm Brian. I'm Brian. <laughs> I'm Brian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm Eddie. Okay. <laughs> We're done here. So this is my panel. <laughs> no, what did you want to talk about? I want to talk about why it is that you are literally in front of three of your best friends. Right. And you are so nervous. I think it's because, okay, so I'm the artsy farsy kind. You guys are like the jocks who play flag football and all that. So. You play too. I know, but like. <laughs> I'm joining Weight Watchers tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> 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 um, I don't know because, like, my thing, my goal was 2019 was to be more creative. So, okay, first of all, y'all don't understand. Like, y'all come up to my therapy all the time because I'm like always scared to ask y'all to do stuff like this. Why? I don't know. Do you think Did just you see how quickly the three of us responded? We're like, what time is hot time? When's hair and makeup? Okay. <laughs> is there a craft service table? We're there. Let's go. I don't know. Before it's us. Yeah, or they were like. Red Skittles. Only red. Right. Or that there were like 30 people at that bar in South Park when you did your reading last time. Mm -hmm. you know? That's like, different to me because I'm like, yeah, that's a reading. And they're not there for me. That's just a part of the show. No. The only reason I <laughs> why is because of you. I met you guys. I thought you meant like the, the crowd. Oh, no, no, yeah. we're talking about your friends coming to that. Yeah. But wait, wait, back to this though. Do you think it's just that you, we wouldn't be interested in doing and following what you're doing like artistically? Or? Or? This is right. Okay, first of all, this is turned to a therapy. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to try to cry. And I love it. And I love it. <laughs> no, and it's funny because, like, it's not me, a friend of mention like, from the job. No, I think. Good job, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I have no. <laughs> talk it out. No, no, no. Any jokes on you from right here today? <laughs> yeah. To talk, to talk about. Never make me come in now. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I don't. What was the question? Like, I. Why do you? Why? Why, do you, why are you so nervous? You're amongst yeah. like literally the closest of your friends. Well, I know that like here now, but like the potential of what this is, like oh, people are gonna see this, and this might look silly or something like that. Okay. So. Oh. All right. Well, I, mean, I get that. Any kind of. And then for me, also, it's production value. Like I'm trying to up my game, trying to get better at my crafts. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Well, that's right. We're here. We're here for you, boom. <laughs> sure, <I> do. <laughs> These yeah. drinks are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to main topic or what? Uh, so I think today's topic is. I was supposed to like to move into it, but I guess we're uh, we're talking about today. We're talking about aging in the gay community. Oof. So, uh, what are your ages? I am thirty nine. I'll be forty this year. I am. 41, but on Grinder I'm 30. <laughs> <laughs> and so is this picture. <laughs> we'll get there later. Uh, chill black guy. <laughs> <laughs> Not chill black guy. No names. Blend it in the football picture from however long ago. Lady, it goes. still gets me trained. It. it still gets me trained to this day. When I had hair. They show up and they're like, what? While I'm here. There so fuck is. For yes. like the first phone camera ever. Pixel, like three pixel, pixels. Pixel boots All three pixels. <laughs> and they always say, oh, you look so much better in person. I know. Because I can't see you. They can't see you in the picture. What is like a white guy? A black guy. Okay. 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 Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I'm 35. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> fucking bitch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I can't curse. 
Uh, I am 43. So, mm -hmm. I know, not to be funny, not to go shade. So, Eddie, you had like premature yep. gray when you were younger. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't know if you like experienced that have anything to do. What am I trying to say? All right, so, are you saying, <coughs> do, do I feel, well, okay, I'll tell you how I felt being prematurely gray. Um, so I didn't come out until like I was like like my early to mid twenties, and then I didn't really start going out out until I was like well into my twenties. Um, but even then, like like looking back now, being thirty five now, looking back now and seeing somebody that's like twenty five, I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so young, right? That's so young. Um, but I feel like I never had that youth. Like like even like when I was in better shape, like I still never felt like a twink, right? Mm -hmm. Like. I just never had that, and I feel like um, I don't know. It's it's. I definitely feel more confident now, being older and and being more mature, and having my look like match that. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, was that like did when you were out at the bars in your twenties and you were starting to go gray at that point? Like, did yeah, that make you way, yeah, it's gonna be way different in your twenties going gray than not. Than so now. I started going gray when I was eighteen. Oh wow! wow. Yeah. So I was like, I was like really gray in my 20s and dyeing my hair. So it did impact me. So I did like try and Oh, you tried hair. Oh, you did? Yeah. Can we talk about that you do have perfect hair about this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just for men. Um, I've only like come to like appreciate it um, like in the last few years. But either way, it definitely did have an impact on me because I didn't have as much confidence. I didn't feel young, I didn't feel cute, I didn't feel like I fit the mold of what it was supposed to be, yeah, that's the, of, of what a young gay man was supposed to be. Right. Like, I didn't fit that mold. Yeah. So it definitely did have an impact on my confidence, hmm. for sure. Yeah. And see, like, so Eric turns 40 this year, and he's still a few years away. Yeah. And see, for me, like, my gray, I am so like you, like, I'm starting to embrace it a little bit, but, like, mine's, like, sort of a different reason. Like, yeah, 40 probably naturally started going gray. But like, I was still that, I'm in like a little midlife crisis being over 40. So I'm kind of like, if I can shade a full piece Is that why you know me? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And we all know that you're bald by choice. <laughs> I know. Yeah. We'll shade. talk about that. Shade. Sorry, shade, shade and shade. Yeah. Both. Not bald. I can grow that. I am bald. I lost my hair a long time ago. And I'm okay with it. Yeah, like the grays. I'm getting better with it, but they bother me sometimes. Like, I have a lot. Correct. So yeah, mine so, bother it. Mine bothers me a lot, like the goatee, especially because I just did you know the Movember and my mustache was all black, and I'm like, but the goatee's all gray, and I'm like, ugh. And then like when it's growing out, I'm just like, I feel so old. I feel like my when did you start going bald? Um, I want to say like <coughs> mid twenty, like it was early. I, I think it's early, considered early. So it was in my mid twenties. Um, you know, it just. <laughs> The hairline just started creeping up to the back. She went up and um, and then you know, so a lot of my family members had already been that were older cousins and stuff like that were shaving their heads, and so I was like, let me just do it now, start early, so that people think it's my choice, and then whatever, and then yeah. So I think I've been doing it now for almost yeah twenty years, probably. You've been shaving your head for twenty years. I think so I mean eighteen, yeah. So See, I started shaving mine. I've been about over 20 years. But so why? Mine, but why? Well, why? mine was because I went into the military. So at the Air Force, like basic training, they had the most ratchet barbers. Oh, like, okay. So I was just like, I'm going to do this shit myself. <laughs> well, so I, mean, I have a question though, because you shave your head voluntarily, um, and you now know that you have like gray whiskers coming in, but you shave that off. Um, mm -hmm. So you can't really see it. He only, he only shaves that off when he doesn't want to be the daddy at night. <laughs> well, <laughs> so so when, when, right. he's, when he's in with the kids, <laughs> right. he, he shaves, shaves it off. When, he, right. when he's going to DILF, right. he lets the <laughs> <shave> right? <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, that's not good. Like, so like, that's not good. That's so that when he's going to overdrive, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how first he shaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really does. It depends on my mood. Like, do I want to be perceived as older or try to... Up here, younger. Well, I was, I was tying this back into something you said, though, because you said that it's more common, obviously, for somebody over 40 to have gray hair or gray uh, facial hair or something like that. But you said you're also having a midlife crisis, knowing that you're starting to get those those like gray whiskers. So what's it get, like? What's what's that about? Like, well, you like, know what? My midlife crisis thing, is right? not like it's not really about like the. 
I know it's weird, but it's not about the aging per se. It's about, and it's kind of like what we were talking about earlier. It's, part of, it's about like me getting older, and it's kind of like I sort of feel like I'm running out of time. Like things I want to do, like creatively and like relationship and all that stuff. So it makes me feel like I literally feel like I'm running out of time. Really? Really? Yeah. You don't think you have, we have like I think oh, for me because I don't have kids and like I see you know my counterparts that do have families like I feel like they are running out of time <laughs> like we have decades more of trips and and yeah I don't feel like we're even halfway through it no, no. I mean I get that part of it and I think again like a lot of it is probably career wise okay. like this is my interest you know the creative writing the movie making or whatever you want to call it and I'm not working in that field yeah. and at this point like that that's not going to change because just financially it's not one of those things like oh I'm not going to I'm giving up on it it's just financially it's not a choice now I just have to see it out like six more years mm-hmm. so but I think that's part of it it's just kind of like it's, it's I do I just feel like I'm running out of time and I'm not saying it's a rational it's like a rational fear I have a lot of irrational fears that's why I go there <laughs> <laughs> but that's where I, that's where it is in my head See, so gr- growing older in the gay community for me is much different because I'm attracted to older men. Yeah. So, and it's funny because a lot of people talk about how as they grow older, what they're attracted to gets younger. And for me, it's actually changed. Yeah. So like when I was in my 20s, my minimum age of the guy I was attracted to was like 35, 40. And now that I'm going older, what I'm attracted to is like 50 plus. So, and this is not by choice, but for me, turning 40 in the gay sense of things doesn't mean much because I'll always be younger than what I'm attracted to. Mm -hmm. Um, So that part doesn't bother me about growing older, like getting gray hair, because the majority of people that I'm attracted to have way more gray hair than I do. (laughs) Um, so, and I also think salt and pepper is hot. So, like me getting gray hair, everyone's like, "You're getting gray." I'm like, "I know, I can't wait." <laughs> yeah. ah, it's, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> right? right? So, but what bothers me from an appearance standpoint, and this kind of goes back to what Eddie was talking about about what the gay community views as attractive or views as young or views as whatever. It's like I'm losing my hair in my back, like um, my bald spot grows. Um, and that for me is, is a struggle, but it's a personal thing for me. So when it comes to getting older, I'm like, okay, whatever. I, my, well, my partner's 56 and I'm everything. turning 40. Yeah, and everything's great. Everything's See, great. I had a question about that too. So like, I'm like, I've been out what, 20 plus years. Mm-hmm. So I'm, my question, <laughs> I don't know, I necessarily know the answer to it. Is 20, or excuse me, being 40 something now the same as it was 20 years ago? Because, like, now we do a lot of like deal parties and make daddy parties and all that stuff. I'm like, those things aren't necessarily around 20 years ago. Like, because, like, you, you, you used to always hear, like, oh, once you're over 40, they discard you in the gay community. You're kind of like, I'm just sort of finding my life. Right. Yeah. Like, we go to these parties and stuff, and like, people are out here chasing the daddies. And this well, and yeah, so I, I personally think that as being gay, becomes more acceptable and more, you know, mainstream. Mainstream, yeah. a lot of these older men are coming out, or it's less, un, you know, in the closet or less, you know, underground. And you're finding that um, it's it, it's okay to be older and sexy, or you know, you can be older and get and gray and still be sexy and still. And there's plenty of younger guys who like older men. I've I have a lot, a lot of competition <laughs> that I don't really care for. Yeah, yeah. And I, I agree with that. I think it's like, you know, there is, I don't know, whatever. I, I, I don't know, like, how long ago being gay and gay culture became, became more mainstream. But it's certainly more mainstream now. But think about, like, 20 years ago, it was all about being young and cute and smooth and a twink and blah, blah, blah. Now those people are older. Those people are in their 40s, 50s, sometimes yeah. 60s, right? So it's like, I think... It was almost like one of those like first generations who kind of paved the way, and now they're the daddies, and now and now they're saying, is, "Wait, no, old is cute." cute. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> they switch it like, "Twink is out, twink is out, Dylan is a new twink." Twinks are stupid now. Right. 
but I think you see what I'm saying is like now there's been almost like this full life cycle of gays where it's been more mainstream, more, you know, just out there, more accepted. Right. And and now you have all these different groups of people mm -hmm. that are just feeling better and more confident about themselves. And so I definitely think being 40, you know, 20 years ago is not the same yeah. at all. Well, we also have to look at um, how those folks back then, so being attracted to older men, I have come in, you know, cross paths with a lot of guys who, when they were coming up, being gay is the worst thing you could be. Mm -hmm. And you didn't talk about it, you didn't act on it, you didn't, other than, you know, and a lot of them would get married, because that's what society told them to do, and they would have kids, because that's what they're supposed to do. And then now all of a sudden, it's more mainstream that we're like you're talking about, and now they're they're coming out, yeah. right? So it's a generational thing. Like now, it's I'm not saying it's easier to come out, but it's more accepted. Yeah. So more people it's are coming out. It's taboo, right. right? It's not so back then. Being 40 back then and gay is like if you don't have a you know a a, a wife and kids and the white picket fence, mm -hmm. like what the like you what's going on? Yeah. So to I think a lot of of the older generation back then to mask their their homosexuality, they would do just that. Because I can tell you, when I was coming out, I literally, at one point in my life, told myself, I'll just, being from Indianapolis, it's a little different from the Midwest, I told myself, I will, I'll just get married, I'll have kids, because that's what we're supposed to do, and then I'll deal with this when I'm 40. And 50. I literally kick on the rock. That yeah, I yeah. literally made. I literally told myself that, and it took. It took an interesting. Um, I met this guy one time who just totally put me in my place. But uh, other than that, that's the road I was going down, and I was ready to do that. And I think a lot of the older generation, that's what they did, because they kind of had to. Then no, I was thinking that as well when I was, you know, coming out in the early twenties. It was like. Yeah, because you know we all were like, oh, is this the right thing? Is this the path we want to go? And it's like, you know, I think we—I well, don't want to speak for everybody, but for me, I still wanted the white picket yeah. fence, the you know, coming home for dinner after work with my you know partner, a wife or a husband. Like, I wanted that traditional type of American you know life. So yeah, there was definitely teetering. I think very early on on could I mask this right. and just try to you know live this life, and then I was like. I went to the club and I was like, no. Man, you, saw, <laughs> you saw one thing that's yeah, I was like, yeah. no, this ain't gonna work. We're good, we're good. I have to make a so, work. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's what happened to me. I'm just, the, the moment I, I realized, oh wait, I don't have to get married, like I don't have to have kids, literally that whole entire thought just escaped. And, like, and it was almost like the weight of the world off my shoulders, right? I was just like, oh, is, but is there, I don't have to do that. And I know this is a little off topic, but is it was is there ever a time where you're just like, what could have been from a offspring perspective? Like what would have been like to have your DNA? Not. No. No. Like not even like I I can I can with all the confidence in the world admit that I am far too selfish to have kids. Like see, no question asked. And I don't think I love kids and all that, but like I know that I, when it comes to my time and my money, I want it to be for me and my person, okay. like period, right? Like, right, and I think we're all a little bit self-centered. At the, I mean, you just have to be being, you know, high thirties and up, you know, living this life. Like there is, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> high thirties, high thirties, mid thirties, mid thirties, mid thirties, mid thirties, mid thirties, mid thirties, but like we're all a little bit there, but I don't know. There's just part of me that's always like, oh yeah, the what if, you know? Uh, you know, I see, I see my nephew, I see little baby cousins, and I'm just like, wow, to you know, to have a child of my own would have been uh, kind of so much responsibility. So I look at my niece and nephew, I'm like, oh, thank God I have niece and nephews, because then I can get the kid fixed and not have to worry yeah, about anything else. I, I just know, buy gifts and whatever they want, and then I leave. And I, it's the whole living, you know, leaving the legacy yeah, behind yeah, and all that stuff too. Thing. So it's just like saving money. See, like, well, what aspect are you talking about? Like, if you would got married and had kids, like, I look at it on the aspect of like like I still think about adopting. I'm kinda of like out of all of us, I'm probably like the most wildest in these streets. What? <laughs> what? So I can move <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, so wait probably <laughs> Wait, probably? So, probably so, okay. So, Definitely. <laughs> 
continue. So like number one, I can't see myself doing it, and I do have a second of all. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, they can the 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 second of all. <laughs> number one, like, I couldn't imagine doing it myself. Yeah. Like so, like that's the first thing, and second of all, I'm just kind of like that's like a major life change. Like I don't know. It, it is, but it's also there's, it's, there's I don't there's some rewarding pieces of it too. Yeah. Like, not, for me, again, I was for a long time was like, you know, I want to I want to meet a partner. We have to be lit, together for five years, and then we're gonna have, you know, I I had this yeah. very mapped out. You know yeah. me, I'm very. Yes. Yeah, you had the relationship five years. I did. I had my five year plan. We were gonna. I was gonna meet somebody. We have to get, be together for five years so that I know that it's gonna last because you already know about my hypothesis about I do the I length do. of gay relationships. Correct. So I was like, we gotta get to that half a decade mark. And then we're gonna have a kid, and then yeah, then 18 years we're gonna you know take care of that baby, and then we're gonna you know retire and, and all that. So that's what my mindset was for a long time. And then yeah, now that I'm 41, I'm like I think that train is. So all along in your gay life, mm -hmm. you you the the thought or the uh, the whole having a kid was part was interesting to you. Absolutely, like, really, absolutely. Even in my last relationship, we had. Talked about oh, really? in the future. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like that's the thing. Now I just it terrifies me. <laughs> really? <laughs> See, so like he said, I think of our friends. I'm the most motherly, <laughs> <laughs> the most concerned, or the most like I think. Uh, and they, uh, this is me. I think I would, I'm the easiest to be able to kind of come out of the clubs and be the homebody and be the mother. I could easily pump my brakes, <laughs> pull into the driveway, get off the streets, and and so you can coach the relationship. <laughs> You're not running. I'm not running anymore. No, no, no. I'd have a whistle and everything. I'd coach them through it. But yes, I think that I could veer and go into that kind of thing pretty easily. And that would be the one in a text message y'all would be like, can somebody babysit by the <laughs> You would be. Yes. Who can watch the kids? Like, we're going to the party too, queen. <laughs> but anyway, for me, that, 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 that train has left the station because I just think for, I would like, and it's funny, and I love, again, I have uh, several actually straight friends that are my age from, from high school that are 41, 42, that are actually having their first child now. Oh. Um, See, so. I don't, yeah, I don't think this is too old to have, I, for, it used to be an excuse for me, like, I don't necessarily think it's too old to have a child now, like, I wouldn't, no. but my, it has to be like, my mom, my mom, my mom had her youngest over 40. Really? Yeah. See, so, that's so I have a 40, so I'm turning 40, my oldest sister is 44, my youngest brother is only like 23. Wow. Yeah. That's such a 20 year, brother. yeah. I bet he's uh -huh. hot. <laughs> he is, he is, he is, he's a very, he's a very attractive. Oh my God, he might hear this. Wait, wait. <laughs> the, young, the other one came to, uh, what was the cry both? Yes, they both. So they both? Alex is the older of the two. Yeah. He's the he's he's at Marquette in law school, and then Mitchell is the younger of the two, and he's in Honduras, becoming a scuba dive master. Oh, right. Yeah. Wait, okay. I think you told me. He just recently lost like twenty pounds. He looks really. Yeah, he looks like amazing. You have a sister yeah. and a brother. I haven't met. Correct. I've met them all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love his family. Uh, Eric's mom. So, hang on. Yeah, I, shout mom. out to Eric's mom. Say, shout, shout out to yeah. Eric's mom. I will say I wouldn't want to have kids maybe even after 35. Um, so like, next year, you're done. Right, yeah. And the reason for that is because... <laughs> oh, you're done. So you're not going to be next time. So, right. yeah. so because my mom was 38 when she had me. My dad was 41 when they had me. And... Um, I was always the kid at school with the grandparents yeah. that were coming on the field trip mm -hmm. and whatnot. And and being a 35-year-old male uh, person, whatever, uh, my father passed away 13 years ago, I want to say, and my mom eight years ago. So, I mean, it's just like, you know, not to bring this you know, bring the conversation down, but, or make it about, you know, my parents passing away or, or the hardship there, but like, I wouldn't want to make that the situation for a child of my own. Right. Right. Cause that was difficult. That was, I yeah. was very young to lose both my parents. Yeah, but so, yeah, like, those are unreal, I don't want to say expectations, but like those are just and then like, variables that you can't yeah. control. Yeah. I get that. But you know, I mean like still, the older you are, the more the likely you are right. you. No, yeah. that's the thing. The only thing. My right. parents had me. They were thirty-two. You know, thirty-two, thirty-three. And I kind of also kind of felt that that was late, just because, like, that you know, when I was coming up as a teenager, they were a little. 
a little bit slower, even though like they just weren't running around and coaching the soccer team and like stuff like that. And it's because you didn't play soccer. <laughs> <laughs> I did play soccer. <laughs> and I'm not gonna curse. Figure skating. <laughs> okay, not about me. Anyway, so for me, it was when I saw, you know, yeah, my parents and like the age they had me enough that <laughs> um, that for me, yeah, starting a family at, at forty something would be uh, would be odd. It's funny, like my parents, I think they had me like they're like 20, 21, mm -hmm. super young. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was common back then. Right, 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 right. So. But anyway, back to being gay and old. Yeah. <laughs> so, can I actually just say one thing? Yeah. I want to say, for me, because I know, you, you know you're into older men, so the aging thing is not a big deal that for is, you. Not from a, from a gay perspective. From a gay perspective. From a personal, it is. Like, Absolutely. Sports. But for me, from a gay perspective, like getting older is tough. Because like, you know, the 20-somethings, right, are the twinks and the young ones, and they're just, you know, they are newly out, they are running the streets, they're in the club, and then it's like, uh, at least when I was growing up, you know, 30s is kind of when you wanted to be established, you know, in a serious relationship, and you're more of a, you know, um, hanging at the house, and, and that kind of thing, and so to be, I feel like I'm kind of in this uh, no man's land kind of age where it's like, okay, I'm clearly not young enough to be, you know, with the kids and I'm not quite old enough to be, you know, kind of considered a daddy, I don't think. So it's like I'm in that little, you know, area. So that's why, I mean, I'm going to keep it real. Like, I don't even, like, on grinder. yeah, I don't put my age because A, I feel like I can pass as younger and B, it's like I'm in that little middle thing because, you know, there's some people that have their filters, yeah. our friends included, that are like, over 40? No. And it's just like, just based on that number. Yeah, some of us said over 40. Yes! <laughs> See, I, I think I'm the chameleon. Over 40 only in the chameleon. I'm trying to be the chameleon that can fit in a bow. Exactly! Like, right! Really like say or not. <laughs> See, based on, okay, what crowd am I going to? <laughs> Dill. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for me, yeah, like, um, you know, just because I was guilty of it too. And like you said, as you go older, you're, 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 taste change and the filters change and you're like okay let me bump up that number but i know for a, a large portion of the people especially with these apps kind of taking over the way that gay men meet each other and interact that i don't want to just necessarily be cast away just because again there's a four at the beginning of my age so that that's been a little bit i think tough for me to, to get to it's just also yeah like i had this plan at my early 20s of where i thought i would be from a gay perspective I think at, at this age and I quite not I'm not quite there it's a and it's a different thing and I'm still enjoying it immensely but it's not what I originally thought it would be so yeah I mean aging in this community I feel like is a little challenging so, go ahead <laughs> so I guess the next no go ahead if you because well, I, I, I have another like a dovetail I do too. Well, all, I was all I was going to say is being the youngest by far here. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, we're done. <laughs> over it. Um, I and okay, so I am going on year four in my relationship. So I just realized now I just did math and met when I was thirty-one. Right. Um, so I've been in uh, a relationship for the most part. Uh, four in my years. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Sound that sounds kind of long, right? Yeah. But anyway, um, I think my my feelings, my personal feelings about getting older have more to do with like my personal career successes, kind of like you, Derek. Like I'm not doing what I wanted to do. I'm not, I don't have the, the title that I wanted to have. I'm not making the money that I wanted to make. So there's all these things that I feel like kind of upset about, right? I feel like being in a relationship and being gay, that doesn't bother me as much. Do I want to be in better shape? Yes, of course, most people do. Um, stuff like that. But I'm not super worried about what other people think of me in the gay community getting older. In fact, I'm probably only becoming, and I'm not saying I'm popular at this point, but I'm only becoming more popular as we've already discussed. Daddies are just becoming more popular, right? But I will say, and this is a context thing, like being single and getting older, I think, would scare me a little. He's like, like you. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy being single, and also uh, there has been a thing since I've turned forty. It's the I don't give an f like yeah. perspective that I haven't, ha I've never had before. That I'm just like, 
I'm good. Like, I'm good. I'm happy. I get what I want. I get my needs met. And I've actually, you know, I think with that mentality, like everybody says, right, that energy you put out kind of comes back to you. And so it's been an interesting, you know, ride the last couple of years. I feel that way, too. Like, the older I get, the more, the less fucks you get. Right. Yeah, and I mean, without, you know, telling you how you feel, like, I have to believe that since you've turned 40, you're, like, probably in some of the best shape you've ever been in your life. And you're probably yeah. having some of the most fun you've probably had in your entire life. Which, Correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. Which okay. exactly goes yeah. with what I was going to say. Okay. So, that's a great segue. Oh. Oh, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was a special <laughs> guest. <laughs> Do you have the demand? Oh, man. We can wrap it up, actually, okay. in a second. Uh, oh, my gosh. What were you saying? What was I saying? So, for me, right now, I feel great, and I'm literally having some of the most fun I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. Like, hanging out with my friends and being, you know, like, it literally gives me the most joy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the most life, the most joy. I'm having so much fun. Running the streets is still fun to me. Like, I, the fact that I'm 40 years old doesn't, it, it doesn't, I don't even think about that. Like, sometimes when I, it's funny, when I went home for Christmas with my family, and my mom, we all know my mother, she still kind of treats me like her little boy. And yeah. sometimes I have to remind myself, oh shit, you're 40 years, <laughs> like you're 40, <laughs> like you're not a teen, like, right. and that, and, and a lot of that, the, the reason why I have to remind myself of that is because I am having so much fun. I'm having, I, I'm, I'm in a, an amazing relationship. Um, and hanging out with my friends, and we still do what we do, and we do kind of party like we're still in college, and and, so and like like more on. But, at the, but at the same time, we are successful. We have good jobs. Our bills are paid. But let me ask a by question. ourselves. Let me ask a question. Though, so, but before this relationship, when you were single for a period of time, yeah, w were you not getting a little bit nervous on getting older and being single? No, no. Okay. Because, but that also has to do with. The type of man, man that I'm attracted to. Okay. So, <laughs> like real talk, like real talk, like real, uh, like just to be brutally honest, I am attracted to older men. I don't think, and a lot of it because of that, will have a problem. I never worried about finding someone. Okay. I mean, because yeah. I'm I'll, I'm always the younger one. Right. So whoever I'm attracted to is like, oh, it's or this younger guy. Yeah. Right? right. Like so, it that never it never worried me. What did worry me like when I was single is that I didn't have a good job and I didn't, you know, like, so right now at 40 years old, I have the best balance of personal, social, professional life that I've ever had, in my, that I've ever had. And it's, awesome. but I mean, and I don't even think about getting older but again, because of that. Derek is a single girl on the panel. I, mean, <laughs> I need you to chime in. Like, tell me, this is not a, a worry of yours of growing older and not meeting that oh, no, I, 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 I stated that earlier. That's that's a big thing. Because it, it's not really the physical age thing. Like, other than this bad. Because you're a six pack. <laughs> like, yeah. other, other than this bad hip. <laughs> I don't feel 40. It's just like the time is running out. So I'm kind of like, I don't want to try to sell this at 50. <laughs> yeah, but you don't sell it though. <laughs> It's gonna be twerking on the bar. <laughs> Maybe your hips are from that. Still out the box. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one last question to wrap it up. So the daddy thing is it bad or is it here to stay? Here to stay. Here to stay. Because daddy's gays are always gonna get older. <laughs> <laughs> I personally think it's here to stay, but that's also. And I also, I personally point. also think just because. California, like our proximity to Palm Springs, like there's just a, an older vibe I feel here. And there's the Twinkie too, but I think the, the proximity to retirement, you know, area, like is going to thrive, like that's gonna continue to thrive. And like we said, coming to, you know, full circle on what we said before, the fact that things are just more mainstream now, like is the fact that now there are daddy parties and daddy events and, and all that stuff. So I think, yeah, it's gonna- And there's a lot of younger guys who like daddies. And, that, and it's now, that's okay, like to have a, 15, 12, 15, 20 year difference between you and your partner is totally okay. Well, it's, and it's just like bears, I think bears kind of happened a little bit before daddies, I think. Like pe people thought bears were like the next, you know, the fad or whatever, like in the late 2000s, early 2010s, whatever it was. And 
they're still as popular as ever. Yeah. Like people still are going to bear parties and lazy bear and this bear event and bear week and blah blah. That's us for sure. So, <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like that's not going away. So I, I agree. I don't think that is going away either. Because there's mainstream. We have everything between Palm Springs, LA, and San Diego. There's everything you could want.